This is soft pity. 64. 65. There it is. What's it gonna be? Although I actively discourage everyone from wishing on the weapon banner, including myself, even I have wished on the weapon banner anyway. So since I'm not going to stop most of you, let's talk about which weapons are most worth your primo gems. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. We're going to go in order as they appear here, starting off with a thousand floating dreams. This is Nahida's signature weapon. To me, this actually goes in the B tier. And the reason why is because Nahida has such solid options, including the wits sacrificial fragments and other options that I'm not thinking of right now it's not really the power spike you're gonna be looking for if you're gonna spend extra on Nahida because your she's your favorite definitely consider going for a c2 instead or of course fleshing out your account with other five-star units the second one is the Amos bow and I'm gonna put this one in the copium tier and that's because it isn't even really the best in slot weapon on Ganyu herself who is the signature weapon holder aqua simulacra polar star are basically both just as good even prototype crescent is the free to play option is not very far behind and the hunter's path is actually her best in slot weapon but of course if you get it from the standard banner then that's totally fine i would consider that a win if you build ganyu aqua simulacra i would put in the a tier this is definitely not an s tier weapon and that's because unless you have c1 yalan you definitely should be using favonius war bow on her instead but it's not even really her best five star bow either because elegy of the end is so good Aquila favonia i'm gonna put in the copium tier as well again we're judging these weapons as their value for how they appear on the weapon banner. So if the second weapon is the Aquila Favonia, basically all it is is a stat stick for your Bennett. And personally, I even prefer the Skyward Blade to Bennett anyways, just because of the ER it gives him. It makes him more comfy on teams. So you don't always have to switch on ER Sands if you were to use him on a really energy hungry team. And really, since the substat is physical damage bonus for the Aquila Favonia, then it is really not useful on anybody because we don't have any physical damage dealing sword users that do enough damage to be to warrant being on field the calamity queller is another copium weapon or maybe the copium queller or the calamity copium the funny part is is i actually wished for this weapon and that is purely for aesthetic and honestly aesthetic and just personal gratification of having the best weapon for your character is in my opinion the only time that it's actually worth going for a five-star weapon because weapons are just stats they don't affect gameplay they don't drastically change the power of your character although they can be a noticeable power jump and we'll get to the s tier weapons eventually but in general all of they're never going to be the difference generally between not 36 starring and 36 starring the, the abyss and if it is the difference that difference can be easily made up for just farming more artifacts so if you're the type of person that you don't like farming artifacts and you want to make that easier but even then you have to have such a well fleshed out character roster and oftentimes it's better to go for constellations anyways but the aesthetic that's something that only the weapon can do there's no weapon skins in Genshin so if you want your Shenha to look as cool as possible you gotta buck up for the Calamity Quellier and that's what I did I would never recommend it it's a copium weapon Favonius Lance is basically straight up better it's not that it's totally useless it's pretty much just as good as Favonius Lance in a different way but it's definitely never worth going Elegy for the end I'm actually torn to put this this in S tier, I'm just trying to think. I mean, it's Amber's, Kale's, probably Fischl's best weapon. It can be good on Ganyu. Venti's best weapon. It's really good on Tainari. It's really good on Yelan. I would say that the Elegy for the end is the perfect weapon to be the secondary weapon. And I would still say A tier is fair. It's worth going for if the second option is good. The Engulfing Lightning, I would put in the same tier because the catch is so high value. The Engulfing Lightning isn't as massive of an upgrade as it would be if we didn't have something like the catch. And because often the Favonius Lance has equal or greater value in a different way. I wouldn't put the engulfing lightning in S tier, but it is a pretty solid weapon. It is Zhang Ling's best weapon. It's one of Shen his best weapons. It's Raiden's best weapon. It's even pretty good on Zhao. The donut, unfortunately, is going to go in the D tier. And that's because weapons like the Thrilling Tails or the Prototype Amber are pretty much just as good, and there's really no reason to ever go for The Freedom Sworn, another really solid A tier weapon. Really good for Kazuha. Really good on Isle Hytham and a bunch of other sword characters. It's actually good on Bennett. Good on Albedo, I guess, and some teams. It's even 
even good on Kaching, pretty good on Kuki. Freedom Sword is just a great weapon. Definitely worth going for if it's the second option. I would put Hunter's Path in this tier as well. Unless you're the most dedicated Ganyu or Tainari main in the world, really any five star bow or a lot of the five star bows can come out pretty close to the Hunter's Path. These are not ordered by the way. And I'd put it as a really solid weapon because Ayato's signature weapon is only barely of an upgrade for Ayato himself, but it's still a really solid stat stick across most sword characters. I would put it in the B tier. Yaimiko's Catalyst is a pretty solid weapon on her, but it's not that useful on that many characters. Basically her, Lisa, Nahida can use it, and that's basically the only characters that are going to be using it. So it's like an A tier weapon if you're a Yaimiko or Lisa main, and a B tier or even a C tier weapon otherwise if you don't have any characters. So just make sure the most important thing that I would look at when deciding whether or not to wish for a five star weapon for your account can my characters actually use both, right? There may be two S tier weapons on a weapon banner, but you don't have any of those types of characters that can need them. So that's not an S tier weapon banner for you. You have to know what an S tier weapon banner is for your account. So hopefully talking through each weapon helps you learn how to distinguish what an S tier weapon is for your account because your account's different than mine. And this isn't, this is for my account, this is just general. Finally, the first S tier weapon, the key of Kajna suit. This is an S tier weapon because it is the only weapon in the game that provides HP percent substat and because it has a really nice buffing pass. Obviously, again, if you don't have characters that can actually use the weapon, for example, it's okay on Bennett, although I wouldn't say it's super great. It's great on Kirara. Lely. It's decent on Kuki, wouldn't really recommend it, and of course it's incredible on Nilu. So basically, don't get, obviously, again, don't get baited if you're not owning one of those characters or want, trying to make one of those characters perform to their best, but it is a really good upgrade, at least until we get an HP main stat. If we, if you're watching this and Fontaine is out and we have an HP main stat sword, this probably isn't S tier anymore. The Light of Foliar Incision, this is a Hytham's weapon. I would say it's really good. It really depends on who you're using. It's another sword, but it does give a lot of EM, so someone like Kaching, Alhytham. If you have Kaching or Alhytham, it's probably an A. Otherwise, it's going to be a B, similar to Kagura's Verity, Naito's weapon. Lost Prayer is okay if you get it from the standard banner, but other than that, it's pure copium. This banner, as much as I would like to put in the donut tier, it's still a five star weapon with five star stats. If you're using a shielder, it is in the copium tier. If you're not using a shielder, it's in the donut. The Mist Splitter, another S tier weapon. Because it's so powerful and so universal, it goes into the S tier. Um, it's basically an amazing choice for any sword user, and it's a really big upgrade on Ayaka and a really good upgrade on Kaching as well. Polar Star, I think the main thing for the bows is just there's so many good bows. If there was only one good bow, you could put it into the S tier, but because there's so many good bows, odds are you'll run into a weapon banner that has two good weapons and one of them is going to be a bow at some point. Even the Skyward Harp is one of the best Skyward weapons, so pretty much all the bows are going into A tier because they're just all so good, and because there's so many, they're less rare, so that's probably why I think it goes in A tier. Jade Cutter also goes in A tier. It's more universal than these two, but it's not quite as powerful as the Mist Splitter in general, especially when you put it on crowd characters because it provides so much crit rate, but that crit rate is amazing. Jade Spear, I'm torn between B and C. It, it like goes at the very top of C. It's probably the best standard banner weapon. I don't think it's quite as good as these. If you get it from a standard weapon, it's a total win. It's an upgrade over four stars for Hu Tao, Sino, even Raiden, even Rosaria, Zhangling. It's Zhao, obviously. It's a really, it's a great upgrade over the four star weapons. It's pretty universal. So maybe it goes in the B. Let me know what you guys think. This weapon is specifically good for Ito and Noel. If you have Ito and Noel, it's either an S or an A tier weapon. If you don't, it's a B or C. So I'm gonna put it here for now, just because there aren't that many alternatives for it. Unlike the Light of Foliar Incision and Ayato's weapon, which have alternatives such as the Jade, the Jade Cutter, Freedom Sworn, Mist Splitter, the Redhorn Stone Thresher doesn't really have any good alternatives, and so that's why it goes into the A tier. That's why I would put it higher, because it's more light, it's less likely to find a good Claymore. Although I do see Dea's Claymore isn't here. Uh, I'm gonna rank that now. I'm gonna say that Dea's Claymore is probably an S tier Claymore because it's a more universal passive. So the Beacon of the Reed Sea, after elemental skill hits opponent, your attack will be increased by 20% for eight seconds. I would put the Beacon still in A tier just because there aren't that many S tier Claymore users in general. Skyward Atlas, great weapon if you get it from the standard banner, a pretty copium 
Requiem, Weapon Banner, Weapon. Skyward Harp, I would say is still a decent weapon. It's not that, it's, it's, it's definitely much less exciting than any of these, but it's still a solid upgrade, I think. Unfortunately, there's really no use for the Skyward Pride. I think one day we could get some more Claymore users that would use the Skyward Pride well, but for now, even four star options are generally better. I think Eula, if you don't have enough ER substats, it can be decent for. It can also be decent for Ito if you don't have enough ER substats, but it's pretty copium and pretty bad, unfortunately. Skyward's Spine, actually not bad. It's actually a pretty good weapon. It's an upgrade over the catch on the right. It's basically a second catch. That's not bad. So we'll take a second catch. I think though that the Jade Spear is still a little bit better, and I think it'll just squeeze into the copium tier. You don't want to be getting this from the standard, from the from the weapon banner. Again, I know people really don't like it, but I really think it's a win if you get it from the standard banner, uh, but a bit of a fail if it's on the weapon banner. So definitely in the copium tier. For a weapon banner weapon, I definitely wouldn't put it in there. The Song of Broken Pines. It's, it's good on Eula. That's about it. And even then, I would kind of probably go for Constellations on Eula, although it is a pretty good upgrade for her. It's really cool that it's like styled after like a bass guitar kind of thing. And then this one's after other guitar. So I think that's pretty neat. But our third S tier weapon, the Staff of Homa. It's a really amazing upgrade on Hu Tao. Um, it's not as ubiquitous as it once was. I would put it on a, as a lower priority than the other two, but it still is a really incredible weapon. An upgrade on most everybody and very universal. So pretty much no matter, and it, but especially it's so much better on Hu Tao than any other option that it makes it really worth it if you're a Hu Tao main. From my understanding, the Staff of the Scarlet Sands is actually really good on a lot of people. So it's either S or A. Still gonna put it in A because although we do have a ton of EM scaling, Dendro characters, and it does give a ton of crit. It's not quite as universal as Homa. Like, Homa is one of the best on Zhao, Zhangling, Rosaria, Sino, Hu Tao, Raiden, or a Staff of Scarlet Sands, and Anjong Li. Staff of Scarlet Sands is Zhangling, Rosaria, and Melt teams. It's really good on Hu Tao, it's really good on Sino. It's good in Aggravate Raiden. So it's it's almost as good. It, you could make an argument for it to be an S tier for sure. The sword is super, super copium. Not totally useless. It still has lots of attack, but it's not even base attack. Oh, it's pretty bad. I kind of want to put in the donut tier, but at least, I don't know. It's not very good. I'm going to put this in the C tier as well. It does give a lot of attack, but I don't know. Wolf's Gravestone also a standard banner weapon. When we get some more really OP Claymore support characters or off-field damage dealing characters, I could see these raising in value. But for now, with the characters we have, Thundering Pulse, another bow that goes into A. The Wanderer weapon, unfortunately, it's pretty copium. It's best for his normal attack build, but a lot of times you're gonna be using charge attacks and the weapon barely buffs charge attacks at all. Better off using his four star weapons, unfortunately, a lot of the time. And finally, Zhang Li's weapon also into D tier. For those of you who stuck around till the end, I made a community post about this, but I've noticed that a lot of content creators are taking a break or leaving Genshin, Braxophone, 1010, I mean Tectone left a long time ago, but MTash. So lots of content creators have like migrated to Star Rail or just left in, in general. And these are all guys that I watched and that inspired me to become a content creator myself. It doesn't really make me sad to see them go because it seems like they're doing it for their own happiness, which is really, really important. I highly recommend you do things for your own happiness. The way I've always played Genshin, I've played, played for coming up on three years, or I guess it's been two and a half years I've played Genshin. I never force myself to play it when I don't want to. If there's an event I really hate, I don't do it. And I never try and play it when I have nothing to do. So I really recommend taking those two things. If you don't want to play, then take a break. Who cares about missing your dailies? Like I started over a year late into Genshin. I missed how many dailies did I miss? You know, you can afford to take a week or two or three or a month or two months off of dailies. Not a big deal. Characters will always rerun, right? Take take a couple months off. And that goes for content creators too. If you're not passionate about the game, then you shouldn't you shouldn't you shouldn't force yourself to create content for it. Especially these guys, they've gotten themselves to a point where they've obviously proven themselves as content creators and they're gonna make any any game they touch great. Second channel update is that I have a new monitor. Because I use screen recording for a monitor. It, the videos will be more high definition when I am doing this type of thing. However, if I'm ever putting gameplay footage on here, the footage will still not be high definition because I'm taking the gameplay footage 
from my phone because I'm a mobile player. I am in the process of buying a PC and then I will have to learn how to play Genshin on the PC. All of this so I can get more higher quality content for you guys because I would like the gameplay and everything to at least be 1080p 60 FPS for a better viewing experience for you guys. It will probably take me about a month to or maybe even a bit longer by the time I learn how to actually play on the keyboard because I am terrible on the keyboard. So we'll have to deal with the current quality of content for now. We will be moving in about two weeks. So it shouldn't interfere with any with any big Genshin news. It's going to be a pretty slow patch, but we're going to be still doing lots of content. I have so many content ideas, so many characters to review and build. And I'm honestly really, really excited for it. I've never been more excited for Genshin ever. I think Genshin is an amazing game and I think it's in an amazing place and I think they've got a lot of incredible stuff for Fontaine. If you've stuck around this long, definitely comment down below what videos you are looking forward most to seeing from me. Bye for now.